Welcome. Today is Wednesday. I think it's October 25th. I think yesterday I said it was October 25th. So I'm sorry. It's early. So today I'm go I'm not going to be on here too long because I'm going this morning to interview some um, specialty food people here in Richmond. I'm going to interview the ladies behind Rainbow Trout Kitchen and they make yummy, healthy granola that's surprisingly got only a little bit of sugar in it and that's awesome. But what I'm doing on live today, feeding two birds with one scone, because I have to do my hair anyway. Strangely enough, the, <laughs> the video of mine that's done the best in the past couple years here on YouTube has been how to blow dry curly hair without a diffuser. Of all the things, I, it's always like that, I feel like, with viral stuff. Of all the things I talk about that I feel like are, you know, more deep and meaningful and interesting than how to fix your hair, Although, I mean, growing up with curly hair, it's pretty deep and meaningful when you figure it out because it is not easy to figure out depending on what your hair likes to do and not do. So for those of y'all who have curly hair, and my hair is 3B curls, which is like medium curl. Um, I personally like ringlets i like spirals in my hair and if i don't train it into doing ringlets it'll just do back and forth like zigzag waves so i like to train it and it doesn't take very long and i have a couple tricks and this is what i formulated when i finally started figuring out how to fix my hair as curly hair i straightened it the whole time growing up and then when i grew up i finally started wearing it curly and then it took me a lot longer to figure out how it actually wanted to be treated so for any of y'all with curly hair you might as well try this method you'll probably ad adjust it to what your hair likes but this is what works for me and i'm happy to share because nobody taught me this i just figured it out on my own so i usually use two products two to three one will be a leave-in conditioner one will be a curl cream or a curl some type of styling product and I'll often use a serum too but I'm not using a serum right now I'm just using leave-in conditioner and um this curl smoothie by Maui moisture so um and the leave-in conditioner is just something I got when I ran out of what I usually like at a store and honestly I'm not even going to recommend it because it's, it's not honestly all that great it's better than nothing but my favorite one is one I get off of Amazon and I believe it's Amazon it's in my Amazon storefront I think and it's not expensive, it lasts a long time, it's nice thick leave-in conditioner, and you put it in your hair, especially curly hair. Since the strands curl, they're more delicate, and so it's important to moisturize them. Actually, I'm gonna spin this plant a little so y'all can see better. Excuse me, Monstera. Pardon me, let me make sure you're not hitting, touching anything you need to be touching. Get my little pin cup out of the way, okay. Oh, you have to be there an hour. All right, this is gonna be pretty quick. So, oh, another notification. Okay, so, hi, how are you guys doing? Um, Eliana, hi. Hey, love seeing you every day now. I'm a curly girl too, love them, but they do get dry and frizzy easily. Yeah, that's why I'm, I'm gonna help you. What type of curl do you have? I just, the only reason I even know what type of curl I have is because I researched it for this. Because I knew there were types, but honestly, I didn't really care because I knew how mine worked, but I figured, especially trying different techniques over the years that didn't really work and it was frustrating. So I know that I have type 3B and it, this might work on other types of curly hair. Um, it's worth a try. And like I said, if you try this technique and it only kind of works, feel free to adjust it, <clears throat> excuse me, for what works with your own hair. It's lovely to see you, Eliana. Where are you coming in from? I'd love to know. Okay. So the leave-in conditioner is distributed through my hair. Also, if you're a curly person, you will probably shed a lot of hair while you're doing this. So you should just make a little pile and throw it away afterward. Okay, then the styling product. So this is usually when, so I was first put on the leave-in conditioner to let it be the thing touching my hair strands the closest and soaking in, helping to nourish my hair. And then I'll usually put in serum if I'm using serum, but I haven't used serum lately. I like it. I just ran out of it and then I was good and didn't get any more. <clears throat> but especially if you have frizz prone hair, 
and or if you live in a humid environment and your hair frizzes in humidity. <clears throat> Sorry, it's early. My voice is still not on yet. Um, then it's nice to use a serum. And the curl smoothie. Different people use different amounts. This is about how much I'll use, I think. And different different hair soaks up different stuff. Like for me, I can't really style my hair using oil. Um, I'm biracial. My mom is black. My dad is white. They both have Cherokee Indian. So I'm actually Melungian. But the Indian is, or Native American indigenous blood is far enough lost that although they know it's in there, we don't have any of the traditions or community around it. But that's the DNA that I'm working with here. So we have like Europe and Africa and the US and that's mostly what's going on in my blood. So I know, especially with biracial people, the whole hair care thing can be crazy. And so my hair is kind of middle of the road. It's not super, 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 super curly, like really tight curly like my mom, who has that magic black girl hair, where if you stretch it out, it's like this long, and then she washes it and it's boop, that short again. <laughs> it's so cool. So I got her curls, but they're not, my curls aren't as tight as hers. My dad has straight, like, blondish hair, or he did, and now he buzz cuts it and has for many years, so I think it's all gray by now, but his hair was always very straight, had no curl to it, so I kind of got the middle of the road there. So now I'm distributing this stuff all in, and it's important, I'm gonna put a little bit more in, it's important when you're putting product in your hair, especially if you have long hair, really anything longer than short, any from medium to long length, put more product in the ends because the oils that naturally come out of your scalp will moisturize your hair more and help you control it more but the dry the ends can get really dry they're also older and they've been there longer so they've been more exposed to the elements the heat the cold when i used to live in sedona it was so hard to grow my hair because the dry arizona heat would strip it so i had when i would trim it and cut off the dead ends i'd be cutting off as much as i was growing um, and that was also before I took biotin to help it grow, and that's helped a lot. And then, let's see, what else? After Burning Man, I'm always very glad for a trim because same thing, the desert dries it out. And a lot of us will wear protective hairstyles at least some of the time at Burning Man um, just because it's so gnarly and also the dust, that fine, like, chalk dust dust gets stuck in your hair and just dries it out because it's super alkaline. Okay, Eliana, hi. I'm from Germany, Baltic Sea area. Nice. Not sure what type I have. It's wavy, but also have ringlets. What do you do after you wake up in between washes when they're all wild? Okay, so when I sleep, I put my hair in like a half through bun on the top of my head. So I put it up high, like I'm putting it in a, hang on, like a ponytail and you pull through and pull through and then the last pull through, you only do it halfway. And so it's like a ball of curls sitting right here. And then I sleep like that. And that stretches out the bottom. So depending on how many days it's been since wash day, I'll style it differently. So for instance, you'll see today, I'm not really gonna make much of a part in it. I'm gonna style it so I can kind of flip it around throughout the day and it's not trained either which way. But I usually do wash day about twice a week. So every three or four days. <clears throat> and as I get closer to wash day and my hair gets oilier, um, and I will refresh it using uh, a little water and aloe and castor oil mixture, which also puts oil in it because castor oil, so it gets kind of heavier. So then I can like mold it better. But generally the first day where I wash it, it's going to be wilder. And so when I put it up, that kind of stretches the curls out a little bit. So then it, it kind of has different personalities each day. But there are definitely plenty of times that I wake up and I just take out that bun and then I can um, just kind of wash it, not wash it, shake it out, rub my fingertips on my scalp a little bit, maybe adjust some of the curls and kind of go. Um, and if I want to wear it in any kind of updo style, I definitely can do that. So I'm sectioning out like a horseshoe shape on the top. And I'm going to clip it out of the way. Because one of the things that can happen with curly hair is, oh, and this is the kind of brush that I use. I love this thing. I didn't own a brush for years and years and years. And then I just got, I just decided to experiment because I got so tired of spending forever standing there in shower trying to detangle my hair. And I saw some good reviews about this one and I got it and I love it. And it helps me style my hair actually. Okay, so here's one of the things. So first I put this out of the way and then I'm going to style the whole bottom of my head and then the top. Then I'll let it air dry for a little bit and then I will um, blow dry it with my no diffuser curly hair method that 
y'all probably know if you're a curly hair person who follows my YouTube. So one of the tricks is when I train the curls and I, I used to do one side of my head going one way, the other side going the other way, and now I do them all going in the same direction. And that means as I style it throughout the days, I can retrain the curls. So like say I put it in a ponytail or a braid or something and I wanna get the curls at the bottom in some semblance of order as my mom would say. And um, so I can curl them like just around my finger all the same again. And so that's one tip that it took me a lifetime to learn. I only did that the past few years. So I was like my late thirties when I figured out how to do that. So it took a long time. So I'm just gonna curl this. I curled it in the direction that it's gonna curl. So it's kind of gonna be soaking that way, like getting used to that shape. And I'm just plopping on top of my head and I have this little, whoops, this little butterfly clip that I'm just gonna keep it in place with so it doesn't escape while I'm doing the rest of my hair. Um, good day, sir. Lovely to see you, Jamal. Uh, we're doing hair, so I, <laughs> this, is, this video is not my normal content, but I had to do it anyway, and I'm going live every day, so I was like, well, rather than waiting till after my appointment, let me go ahead and do this now. Oh, sorry, I gotta sneeze, maybe. I got a tea sneeze going on. Oh, okay, also, just because yesterday on my live, somebody assumed that since I didn't mention the troubles going on in the world, that I didn't care about them or was ignoring them. And so I just want to say really quick, sending love and blessings and healing and resolution, loopholes, peace and solution to everybody who needs it everywhere they need it. Um, I don't, I'm not in a position to know, to speak about things and to have opinions about things. It's not, I, I don't know enough and I know the the problems are older than I know of um and so I'm not gonna be I see a lot of people in the U.S. like having all, who who don't know anything having all these super strong opinions and I'm not gonna be one of them I just know that I want people to be safe and happy and able to thrive and enjoy their lives and us to make cool shit in this world and not be mad at each other for no reason other than of what genetic structure we happen to be born okay so that's a disclaimer so all right what we do is we take, so at first I take the section from above my ear forward and pull it and let, like, see, I'm kind of making it into a ribbon. And then I curl it, let's rise up a little bit so you can see. And I'm just training it. And these parts of my hair above my ear, um, up to like the top of my head are the straightest. They're, they annoy me because after, and that's why I do them first because after my hair is styled, styled, they're usually ones that will lose curl and they'll just like hang out straight in my hair and look weird with all the curls. So that's what happens. Yay. So my hair is curly, but if I hadn't done that, like look at what it's doing back here. It's just kind of wild and all over the place. Like it's not, and some people think that's fine and that's fine, but I like a more structured look personally. Um, so again, I'm going from the top right over the, um, the high point of my ear, separating it out, combing it out making it into kind of a ribbon, making it flat. See? And then and then I just encourage it to ring it up a little bit more. And then I'll let these hang out here the whole time because also as I like to sweep my hair back over my shoulders when I'm doing stuff so it doesn't um, get in the way, that will often stretch these pieces even more. So again, they'll be the one odd out straight pieces in my head of curly hair. Hi, um, <clears throat> Divya, lovely to see you. Um, LOL, curly hair is not easy. It's great to know I have that in common with everyone here. I use mustard oil and gram flour and coconut milk and a hair mask. Ooh, that's cool. That's something I can get better on and do is doing hair masks. Um, I do massage my scalp with essential oils and oils in general. Um, but not as often as I should. And yeah, that, that's an area of growth for me is doing more hair masks. So I've got this whole section of hair in the back. This is all the hair in the back of my head from here back. And I'm just going to take my finger and make a part. It doesn't have to be perfect because it's just separating my hair. It's not for styling. Okay. And so this side, which is the entire back side, I'm going to, again, make it into a ribbon and I'm just going to give it one curl and set it there to rest while I'm doing the other side. Because if you were to do this and just leave it like that, it would dry weird, it wouldn't look good, especially because my hair is cut in layers. I do kind of a modified wolf cut. I cut my own hair on the solstices and equinoxes. And if you have layers and you don't style for the layers, then it's gonna look weird. 
Also, the reason I separate this on top is because you curly hair people probably know that one of the annoying things that can happen with curly hair is it gets flat on top and poofy on the sides and you have like a triangle head or you look like a clown and that's not what we want. So, so I have layers that range from like yay long to like yay long. I think I cut it in three or four segments the last time I cut it. So I don't need to go exactly by that. I just generally, so we've got like a long thick strip of hair at this point. So I'm starting at the bottom. I'll separate a little bit out like that. And then set this aside. And this takes way less time when I'm not explaining it. Like I'd probably already be done by now if I were just here doing it. And just the same method. See, it's already starting to ring lit up a little bit. Actually, it's a little too dry, so it's curling weird, but we're just gonna go with it. Okay. If I were in the bathroom where I usually do this, I would just get a little water on my hands and wet the curl. See, so it's kind of ringlet-ish. And then I'll plop it in the back to rest. So that's the only thing back there because the rest of the hair is pulled over the shoulder. And now I'll do it a little bit further up. Now I'm just gonna go in these like wide sections because now I'm doing it in strips. I just ran my thumb up and made again a messy part. And so now I have like a strip of hair, like a wide thick stripe. If I had more time, I'd probably separate this into two vertically. So I'd have like little cubes, um, messy cubes. But if you're looking at what's actually coming out of the scalp, it would be a cube of hair. And so I'd make this two curls rather than one, but I'm just gonna do one because I'm a little pressed for time. So the same method again, just wrap it up encourage it to ringlet and see I'm doing them all the same way which is just the way that my right hand curls it because my right hand is my dominant hand okay and then plop it behind my back to dry now I'm just going to take a little section over the top of my ear because this one this one if I went all the way across I'm putting it all the way there it would be too thick and then since the curls um the strip would be too wide and the curls wouldn't dry right they would just be messy and not where I want them to do so again, same method. Let me see what you guys are saying. Um, Eliana, are you gonna stay in Virginia now? How is the weather? Do you feel at home there? Oh, great questions, thank you. Um, and then I'm just continuing the strip over here. I am going to stay in Virginia for the winter until next fall, I know. Um, I would like to be here for another growing season and have a garden. And so that's what I'm thinking. But after that, we'll see. I mean, I don't know, I don't. I haven't committed. I'm not opposed to it, but I, as like a holy person, I just kind of go where I'm called and serve where I'm needed to be. So I don't have anything tying me here. Like I have some family here, but I also have family in LA. And so um, I don't know the answer to that, but I do like Richmond. It's beautiful here. Um, I meet more and more great people all the time. There are good things and bad things about all parts of the world and of the US. You know, like East Coast, people are a little less aware of like energy healing and wellness in general in a real sense. But um, they also don't just talk in jargon and not do the work. And that happens where people are aware of stuff. Doesn't mean they actually do it. Okay, so now I'm like, I have this section, but it's basically just the same thing that I'm doing. I divide it, put that aside. Let me see. And I'm doing this in the back. And you see how I'm pulling it like away from my scalp rather than down? because I want it to have volume as it dries. So I'm lifting it off of the scalp. And so now I have a little strip. This is actually like a rectangular spot coming out from my scalp and I'm gonna break it into two. Because if I were to make that one long one for with my hair, the curls would just dry weird. It wouldn't work very well. So let's see, what's the weather? The weather's beautiful, it's cooling down, the leaves are starting to change and I'm loving it. So first the trees looked like they have, they, they, right now they look like they have makeup on, like the outer edge, it looks like someone dusted them with bronzer. <laughs> um, and then they're gonna continue to get more and more colorful. Okay, so that's the whole one side. And I will just, so when, when I lift my hair, like scrunch it, I do not squeeze my fingers. Like I see people scrunching their curly hair super aggressively and I do not do that because it will make the curls chaotic. If you are if you have a lovely ringlet and you go it'll get weird. But if you just lift and hold, then it'll stay ringletty and just be bouncier. Does that make sense? I hope so. At least with my top of hair. Do I feel at home in Virginia? Girl, I don't feel home anywhere. I'm from another damn planet. Like, 
not really. So not, and also I feel home everywhere because I love earth. So every ecosystem, I'm just doing the same thing over here. So I'm gonna chat with y'all while I do it. Cause I have to leave in 15 minutes. Woo, it's gonna be tight. Um, I will not go on live on my other one, on my other accounts till after because I do not have time. Um, so if y'all wanna jump on and hang out with me in a couple hours after I get back from interviewing and touring the Rainbow Trout Kitchen kitchen, then we can hang out there. But uh, I love nature everywhere. So like when I lived in the desert, I appreciated the desert. I grew up in the forests, so I've always missed trees and I'm so happy to be back in forest. However, I don't love the bugs and ticks and fleas and that kind of stuff that's, that is here more than in the desert. Um, but it's pretty easy. I treat the cats and I use, um, when the when the mosquitoes are very prevalent, I make sure I put lavender oil on before I go outside and that makes them not really mess with me so much. Um, oh, your mom and your grandma taught you that mask. Ooh, then you know it's good. When it comes down like that, people don't, people don't use stuff for that long unless it works <laughs> or unless they're very superstitious. But when it comes to beauty stuff and women and women through the generations, nobody's got time to do things that don't work. <laughs> so thank you for sharing that. Um, look at it again. Uh, mustard oil, gram flour, coconut milk. I have never even seen mustard oil or gram flour, I don't think. What is gram flour? Like, what's a gram? Like, what, what does that mean? Because I would love to know and try it myself. Um, Let's see, good morning, Zoe. Yay, welcome, welcome to the live. We're just doing hair today. We're not talking about deep esoteric subjects. I mean, we can, whatever y'all wanna talk about, we can talk about. I'm gonna be here till I'm done doing this. But um, today it's just hair care because I had to do this anyway. And I would have been such a happier camper had someone taught me this when I was, I don't know, 14, 15. I'm putting that back in the back. By the way, as you saw earlier, the other side, I just pulled it all over my shoulder and now it's sitting here, um, not being disturbed by the stuff in the back. And again, I'm just taking like strips and it doesn't have to be perfect cubes. It can be chaotic. It doesn't matter when you're done, you're not going to be able to tell. It's just that the curls are going to be defined. So again, holding it out from the scalp, not pulling it down so it, it's not flat. And that curl's a little weird, so I'm just gonna retrain it. And then again, I'm lifting, I'm not squeezing to make the curls jagged and chaotic. I'm just lifting to make them bouncy. Okay, almost done with this side, a few more. Welcome. And this will last definitely all day. So the way that this works is when I'm done, I'm going to let it kind of cast up while I'm doing my makeup for the day and get, like getting dressed and stuff. And then when everything else is done and it's already semi dry, I'll end up blow drying it because I don't have time and I don't wanna go out of here with a wet head, but it's also fine to just let it air dry. But especially if you let it air dry and really regardless, as it's drying, flip it around a little bit, like move it from going one direction to the other direction, like flip your head upside down and again, lift the curls. It's I mean, it's not scrunching, but it's scrunchish. Lift the curls so that they get bouncier um and also you want to flip your head around while they're drying because if you do that they won't stick to the top of your head as much and you'll have more volume which is great uh aliana how oh wait let me scroll back up y'all are talking about a comment that i did not see and it's gone now so hold on feel free to keep commenting and asking questions and stuff i'm almost done i'm gonna be on here for like oh i'm almost out of time I'll be on here for probably another few minutes while I'm finishing this up. Okay, so there's that whole side is done. And then again, we're gonna lift. See? So that just kind of makes them bouncier and on this side too. Okay, great. Let me see what you guys said. Okay, Eliana, in an older video, you mentioned your religious upbringing, and I have the same. Some of my family members are still in it. It's really hard because I miss them because they're very judgy. How did you deal with that? Um, hi, Taco Love. <laughs> That's a funny name. I'm pleased to see you. And you've got the taco icon. Yay. Good for you. Um, okay, good question. So I was actually just talking to my sister about this when she was in town. All right, before I get into that, so y'all know what I'm doing, it's the same thing. I'm just going to 
take strips and divide them into sections and curl each one. So that's what's happening here. So I had a very religious upbringing. I was very fortunate and blessed that when I was 12, both of my parents left that tradition um, at the same time. They got divorced. It was very big upheaval. It was like a big death and rebirth time. They got they decided to get divorced. And then they also left that church because they saw the hypocrisy in it when the divorce happened. Like both like the elders like accused my parents, like they accused one parent of like cheating on the other. And my parents did not cheat on each other. They just, the marriage just wasn't working out. Like there was no horrible anything that happened. Nobody was abusive. Nobody was like no big, big betrayals or anything. It was just toxic. It just wasn't um, good anymore. And it actually hit me really hard as a teenager. And I was very like depressed for a while after because I didn't understand. But, and looking back, I really wish that my mom who made the choice to end it because now as a woman and knowing what a draining relationship feels like, and I love my dad, but he was not showing up for my mom in the way that, that was healthy. Um, and I am so glad they broke up. And that goes to show for anyone who's afraid to leave an unhealthy relationship because you have kids, def as someone who comes from like a broken home, definitely end it because your kids are gonna learn to do what you're doing. So if you're in something that's toxic, your kids are gonna think that's normal and then they're gonna manifest the same thing. Um, way better to be with parents who are apart but happy and healthy mentally than parents who are together and miserable in a home that feels awful when you walk into it. Um, so anyways, my intuitive abilities, were, they were always on but I didn't really know what was going on until I was off in college. And neither of my parents were religious at that point. My dad was um, spiritual. He did a lot of martial arts, a lot of meditation. He actually taught me to meditate. Um, but then I just geeked out on it and kept going. And he was like, wow, you're in a whole other, whole other thing. Um, and my mom, we weren't really talking much back then. We had about a 10 year patch that was really rough and we were pretty estranged. Um, but now our relationship is so great and beautiful and I'm so grateful on a regular basis that I have such a wonderful relationship with my mom. Um, I feel really lucky, especially when I hear of people who have moms who were addicted or narcissistic or abusive or whatever. Um, let's see. So my extended family, however, is still very religious and that is something that can be really hard. So this, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm just going to I'll just talk to you as I do it. So um, these I'm going to pull down because I have a weirdly shaped hairline. I always have my whole life. My hair came in late. I didn't even grow hair till I was like two. I was like a little bald headed girl running around. And then when I grew, so you see that was the same method, but see how it ringlets versus just like waving around being crazy. But my hair started here and grew in like that. And to this day, I have a really like wavy shaped hairline. Like my hair goes back a lot here and then like curls, which is, um, cool when you're laying edges because it's like great for that but it's always something I've been a little bit insecure about because I don't have like this clean pretty round hairline like it goes back far like right here see that and there are baby hairs there but then it so it waves like one two three that's how my hairline looks so as I'm styling my hair I'll usually like make sure that around that opening I pull it down so it kind of covers that just because something I'm kind of insecure about. Um, my extended family is still very religious and it's interesting because I'm very spiritual and always have been but the classic religion that works for my extended family because again it works for them that's great like if that's the way that you connect with God then go for it. So that, I did it so that the hair follicles can kind of face this way, but then I'm gonna to toss it back again. And as it dries, I'm gonna flip it around. Um, and I do know that some of them judge me and I have heard of not nice things that they've said about me. And I have sat in a church uh, where my cousin was the minister and felt like he was sometimes directing stuff toward me when I would go for family functions. And it sucks and I understand why you would be scared to be out and about about what you believe if you have that because I would I would love to be able to say oh just let it roll off your back da, da, da. but times in my life when I've heard of like a cousin I haven't spoken to in 10 years talking smack about me and calling me crazy it cuts like a knife and it took me days to shake that off so 
I would say just minimize your, your interaction with people who are mean to you, regardless of why. Because I know what I know. And I don't know it because some person who I never vetted, I never saw if their intuition was accurate or if they were a good person, wrote it down in a book that I've been trained to blindly believe. That's not where my spirituality comes from. For people who that works for, that's fine if it works, if it makes you a good, more connected, kind person. But for me, my spirituality comes from within. So I don't need to convince anyone of, of anything. I don't care if, if people adopt my beliefs. It's not for them, it's for me. So I'd say just don't fight, don't argue. Just be like, okay. <laughs> when they say something, just be like, okay. Like, think what you want, believe what you want. Um, okay, you're welcome, it's chickpea flour. Oh, coconut milk was added by me. My mom's mom used to tell my mom, I'm gonna touch up my nails while I talk to y'all because I've got a couple big chips. Uh, my mom's mom used to tell my mom and she would use mustard oil on my head. You warm it in the stove and massage it and leave it for overnight. Then the next day you wash it with gram flour or chickpea flour, same stuff. Cool, huh? That's awesome. Um, I'm gonna finish reading that in a second. I just need to do this because your girl is running out of time and a little late, but that is okay. And better to be slightly late and have your shit together than on time and feeling crazy. All right. Um, what are your thoughts on someone who is highly sensitive, starseed, et, et cetera? That's the tribe being in law enforcement. I've been pulled to do this for a long time now. Any advice? Uh, my advice is that people like us are needed everywhere. Like people who can feel and think and see and who are resistant to brainwashing are needed everywhere. So go wherever you're called because the whole point is for us to be present everywhere. We're not supposed to like move away and rise a country out of the sea and live there. Instead, we're supposed to be permeating all layers of society. That's why we're born into all layers of society because we're part of the evolution of human consciousness. Not that everyone's going to go this way, but there's a pretty big segment of people who do. Okay. Uh, Bisan is used in a lot of Indian food, so it's cheap, affordable here. You guys can try stuff that is affordable there. Cool. Ooh, that's so awesome. All right. Thanks, you guys. I got to go. I'm supposed to leave in one minute. That's not going to happen. I'm running 10 minutes later, so I'm going to go do my makeup and then go. But thank you so much for hanging out with me. I hope this was helpful. So quickly, um, like as I'm dry, as it's drying, I'll get nail polish on it. I'll flip it around and I'll let it sit like this for a while, a few minutes, and then I'll flip it around and let it sit for this for, for a few minutes. And then as I'm blow drying it, because I, like I said, I will blow dry today, like in the video um, that I've recorded before, I'll hold the blow dry down here and lift with my hands so my fingers like become a cage for the curls. Again, I'm not scrunching, I'm just lifting them. And then I'll blow from the blow dryer below have it on low heat, low setting, a little bit of heat, but not, not a ton. And then I know I'm not burning my hair because if my fingers get too hot, I just move to another location. And um, if your fingers aren't burning, your hair's not burning. So that's how that works. Um, now I'm like, oh, I'm being tugged. I've just heard other light workers advise against it because of the darker entities, etc. Babe, there are dark entities everywhere. There's dark entities in the bar down the street. There's dark entities in the grocery store and light ones everywhere. And so again, I think just make sure you're using really powerful protective techniques that work for you and that you have people that you can ground in with and check in with. Um, because yeah, I mean, there's the, or like say entertainment industry. How many star seeds are in the entertainment industry? And the entertainment industry has tons of dark entities all over it. But there, dark entities are also part of the population and they're not necessarily like, it's like people, right? There are all kinds of people. There are all kinds of entities. If you're being called to something, do it. Just protect yourself. Yeah. Um, now I'm like, chill, I shampoo, and I just don't want to do the whole ritual. But then days later, it dries out, and I'm like, whoa, straight hair people are so lucky. Yeah, but they also curly hair look like us, so <laughs> we're all lucky. Every, every type is beautiful. That's a weird trick that this world plays on women, especially. It's like, oh, what you have is less beautiful than what someone else has. No. Straight, pe straight hair people try to dye their hair, uh, try to curl their hair. Curly hair people straighten their hair. Pale skin people go to tanning beds. Dark skin people bleach their skin. Like, it's just, <laughs> it's just crazy. Just, if you're healthy and happy and connected, you're gonna be beautiful regardless. And your beauty may help somebody else feel beautiful who didn't before because their kind of beauty was like held to standards that didn't respect it. Oh, cool. Um, you posted an Amazon link for Graham Flower called Be Sun and chat removed it. That's weird. I don't know, it must be AI thing. 
Um, okay, thank you guys so much. Have a beautiful day. I got to go, but I love you. I'll be back on live tomorrow. And if you want to pop over to my Instagram or my YouTube, I will be live after I'm done doing this interview. And so after I come home in a few hours. All right, love you guys. Have a beautiful day. Thanks for hanging out with me. Oh, the Women's Moon Gathering is Friday night. Come join it. Um, the Wellness Level Up class is still on the early bird sale. Come take it if you want support and to have a good winter. Also, come join my Patreon. If you're not already on my Patreon and you like my work and you think it's valuable and you want more of it, come join my Patreon. It's not expensive. The lowest tier is like $8 a month and we do a lot of great stuff over there. So love you guys. Have a great day. Bye.